Well, I was drafted into the military in 1966. I spent the first year in the States, and from there I was sent to Vietnam. I was in Vietnam for a year, and I got out in 1968. Mr. Purdue is a very nice gentleman that's been followed by the clinic here for a number of years. And at his last uh, visit, he had complained about some mild visual complaints that had just started happening over the past few months. I played a considerable amount of golf. I could always hit it. I never, I never could score so well, but I could knock it out of sight, but I could find it. I got to the point where I didn't know where the ball was. And that was my first symptom that something was going wrong with my eyes. So in a healthy eye, it's just incredibly stable. So when you're fixating, you're looking at a target, your eye is essentially not moving. Keep your eyeball straight all the way up. The Parkinson patients actually, not only is it moving, but it's oscillating. So they have these rhythmical movements that are just like the tremor in the arm. Basically every patient with Parkinson's disease has a uh, very fine amplitude tremor in their eyes. Uh, and it functionally smears the image on the back of the retina, causing blurring of vision, uh, especially in low contrast situations. I'm gonna slip this up on your head. So we recorded Mr. Purdue's eye movements and found that he has an actually fairly moderate sized tremor, a little bit larger than average, and just above the threshold of what we would expect to begin affecting your vision. A good analogy of what happens with these uh, eye movements in Parkinson's, if the eye is shaking back and forth, very, very small amplitude, but relatively quickly, it's just like if you're taking a picture, but move the camera while you hit the shutter. You're basically smearing the image on the, on the film. Uh, your retina works in very much the same way. When I try to read, what I notice that's different now is that in a very short period of time, the, the lines on the paper become blurred. I certainly don't read anywhere near as much as I used to, okay? And trying to read now seems to put stress on, on, on your body, and I don't think stress and Parkinson's go very well together. In Mr. Purdue's case, corrective lenses don't really affect his vision at all because it's not problems with his eyes, it's problems with his eye movements. And what's actually happening is that the eye is shaking back and forth and smearing the image on the back of his retina. Uh, so no matter what type of glasses you have, nothing's gonna fix that movement. That's what's causing the problem. When I take my medication, I can always tell that it has impacted me in every area. When we see patients who are not on their medicine, and then they take their medicine, what we see is the, the amplitude, the size of that oscillation is reduced. And we have found that after the medication, there's a reduction of between 75 to 90 percent of the oscillation going back and forth. When I take my medication, my vision is good enough for me to see and go and do anything that I want to do. So what I told you that you look at your thumb? Yes. One more thing I always talk about is the exercise of the eyeball. Now think about it, we are very good at exercise, right? We go to gym, we walk, we don't do anything for the eye muscles. So that is another very important thing for the eye muscle to exercise. I do have uh, eye exercises that were given to me uh, specifically by Dr. Q. Those exercises involve uh, looking at your thumbnail and uh, pulling it back and getting it close to your nose. It involves putting your arm out and putting your finger up and touching your nose with it. You have to do your exercise for your eyes and your, for your brain. Brain exercise is what? It's reading. Every day read something and that will keep you going. We believe that we can use this to predict Parkinson's disease in preclinical states, possibly 10 to 15 years before you show any symptoms at all. All that I want you to do is follow that dot with your eyes the best you can. By the time your symptoms are manifesting outwardly, you've already lost approximately 70% of the cells that are producing dopamine in your brain. We believe that the eye tremor may be present long, long before that. We've actually identified ocular tremor in essentially every patient who has Parkinson's disease. And if you can follow this dot for me, please, sir. So basically we can take a specific type of eye movement abnormality and map that back to a specific part of the brain, which we would expect to be abnormal in a certain type of disorder. So it's actually a very accurate tool in differential diagnoses between different movement disorders, some of them even before they manifest symptoms outwardly. Etta and I spend an awful lot of time in this yard. Uh, Etta has certainly done a marvelous job of landscaping and taking a fairly rough looking yard 
and making something that's highly desirable out of it. I would suggest that having a wonderful woman in your life is worth any man's time. She was my high school sweetheart. She ran off and left me and went to college and left me in an old podunk town. And 50 years later, we're back together. You know, if you're gonna have quality of life, I'm gonna have to support him because my life is okay. So if we're gonna be able to do anything together, I have to look to him to see what he needs. Otherwise, it won't be nice for either one of us. She is a very important part of my life. Uh, and in fact, uh, the most important.